Hi, we're back with my guest, Dr. Judy Sullivan Osterhage, and she is someone who has been through a lot. She's had her own heart condition. She lost a son. She has another son with a heart condition. Uh, she is an educated person in um, uh, elementary education. She has her a doctorate degree in social justice and educational leadership for change. She's a parent coach, a certified mediator fo focusing on families. So welcome back, Dr. Judy. And I have a question for you. How on earth did you get into the, self, the sex trafficking awareness and education? Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, originally, I had no idea. I was like most people I talked to. They, they, oh, it happens in other countries. I had no idea. And because they, ch they changed the law in California to where these uh, survivors went through foster care, I became charged to educate parents. Well, I didn't know. And I remember the first training I went to to become a trainer, I, it sickened me. It was, I had to get up and leave the room for a while because it was just too much. I had no idea the scope of it. And so having been a part of the mandate to what I do to train um, foster foster parents in this, I just became, got more, um, more involved in my community. I, I joined the task force with the district attorney's office. I started helping nonprofits create uh, nonprofits in regards to helping survivors. Um, I became a spokesperson and, and helped um, a nonprofit start a, um, a residential home for survivors. So I really, really got into it that way. But I also, and uh, they changed another law where they extended foster care to 21. So now at the college, we had students that were, um, that were still in foster care that had graduated, they used to shut off at 18 and they were in high school, but now they, our students were in foster care still. So I started working direct with, directly with them and finding out that some of them had been trafficked and finding out their story and really um, connecting the two, seeing these survivors, having that education and it just kind of collided where, oh my gosh, this is real. These are real, these are real girls. These are real, and I, I tend to say girls, but there's there's boy survivors as well, and boys boys who are victims. But I work mainly with the with the girls, so I tend to say girls. And it was it was shocking. It frankly was shocking what was happening in my own county, in my own community, and it was really eye opening. So I started doing um, educational classes, offering webinars, training teachers, and and really trying to get the word out. And it kind of when it exploded for me was a year ago, actually a year ago, January, I saw the news and they were bringing up the new laws for California. And it said that every person in the hospitality industry, an employee in the hospitality industry has to be educated on trafficking, that there is a mandate that everyone does. So that means all the hotel people, the cruise ship. So I jumped on that and started uh, traffickingawareness.org and started creating these classes to um, to fit the need for the for these people that all need to be educated. I was just so excited that I found a vehicle that I could ed start to educate all these people, um, especially hotels, because that's where 80% of the trafficking happens. And then COVID hit and everything stopped. <laughs> everything stopped, hotels closed, cruise ships stopped. Um, everything stopped except the trafficking. I was gonna say that gives a, a trafficker an extra opportunity because the places that they would normally uh, may be recognized were no longer an impediment to them. Right, right. And so they, and and, it, and it's just keeping ahead of them. So right, right now, um, a lot of the awareness is coming to people who do the VRBO, the, you know, the, the B and B kind of rentals, because that's the kind of the new shifts as the hotels start stop. There's a lot of that, um, being utilized, trafficking being utilized in, in, in that arena. So you know, that's amazing. Cause I have to tell you in Florida, it's still 18 when they age out of foster care, oh. because I, I run a, a mentorship for not-for-profits and one of them is uh, a company or an organization called educate tomorrow. And they work with a lot of foster kids and it's really difficult when they age out of foster care and they don't have a place to go. So they started a residential facility 
uh, and jobs and 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 um, uh, college type programs to get them, you know, having something to do. So I know it's a tough it's a tough road. So oh. go on from there. So what's happening now? Yeah, I love to hear that because it's it's excellent when kids can get services like that. Well, what right now what they're finding is probably uh, the 65 to 68 percent of the the kids trafficked are from foster care. And so um, and so that's really sad because we're getting a lot of our we're losing a lot of our kids to this. And a couple of things. Are one you saying is, that they're trafficked while they are in foster care. Some are. Some are. Um, and the not, foster parents don't know about it or do condone it? No, no. Um, no most likely they um, they don't know. Uh, there have been cases where they were the traffickers, but that, you know, that's not common. Um, I, I always like to advocate for our foster parents because we have such an amazing group of, of foster parents that, um, so I don't want to give the impression that, you know, foster parents are, are um Icky. I just, I, I think they're heroes, but you, but it's surprising because right now what we're finding is, um, is that the reason they're more vulnerable is because they have been abused. They have been sexually abused. They have been told they're worthless. They have been all this stuff. So when they find someone that's going to kind of groom them and tell them they're wonderful and they're loved and here's some, you know, gifts and they, they tend to go with the foster, I'm the trafficker, um, with less resistance. Well, you and, know, you mentioned something that's really important and that's the word groom them. I've heard that so many times that they're groomed for mm -hmm. what they, they, uh, are being prepared for. And, you know, I never really thought about it that way. I thought, well, you know, you're on your own and you don't have any money. So you go out on a street corner or whatever it is and you get yourself a pimp. Uh, uh, uh. No, they, no. They, in fact, um, I don't know who I was talking to, but somebody that I was talking to said that there was one family. Uh, I think there were, I don't know, maybe five people in that family. And they had this trafficking business like down to a science. They were making over a million dollars a year uh, through it. And it was all started because I said, well, how did, they, how did they get these girls? And she said they groomed them, mm -hmm. that they start off by, you know, dating and giving them things and telling them how wonderful they are. Mm -hmm. And they brainwash them. And the next thing they know, they're, they're in this uh, trafficking cycle and they're not able to get out of it. Right. And I just, I just, my heart just sunk. I couldn't believe it. And, and the fact that there were people, a whole family making a million of dollars out of this was just so abhorrent to me. I couldn't believe it. So uh, go on, Dr. Judy. Well, that, that's a good point is because it, it trafficking brings in uh, more money than, than, um, selling guns now. Um, and it's just right under selling drugs because you can sell drugs and they're gone, but you can sell a child and they and resell them every day. So that's why it's so lucrative. And it's also so lucrative because so many people are purchasing this. And so that the buyer is keeping the demand um, increasing. So that's yeah, it's a pretty sick person though, Dr. Judy. I mean, uh, you know, you hear occasionally, you hear the the teacher who might be a pedophile or you hear um, a coach or you hear, you know, a pastor or something. But uh, the fact that there are so many people with this inclination is just, it's just mind boggling to someone like me who doesn't even go there at all, right. you know, to, to right. think about this. I mean, uh, it, it's just amazing. Right. Yeah, and you know what would really blow your mind is is that the um, with all the data, the the profile of the person who buys the profile is typically a white middle aged male that's a professional, married, couple kids. That that's the the mo that's the profile of the the buyer. Wow. So the wife doesn't know anything about it. The kids don't know anything about it. He's supposed to be a perfect family man, a perfect business person, and yet he's procuring these young girls on the side. Well, he can necessarily be the buyer to where he, yeah, he, he's just, you know, he's buying that. Um, and then, and then, you know, the traffickers typically, and see, that's the thing too, that's just so crazy in this pandemic is what's happening a lot is that, um, family members are trafficking, uh, 
family members, uncles are trafficking nieces. And, and that's the really crazy part about it. And, and this is really sickening, but on the news, um, it, not too long ago, it was a mom that was trafficking her kids so she could feed them. She had no money, she had no job. And so, um, so she she had she was going and 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 going on Craigslist and and selling her kids and and um, it, it's just it's just heartbreaking, and it's and you have to realize this 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 mom who was doing that had to come from a place of really um, disruptive trauma and some really to, to have a mindset that anywhere on earth that that was okay. Well, it's amazing to me that she didn't traffic herself that she trafficked the kids. And then uh, the kids don't have enough wherewithal to say no, I guess, to a mom, although you would hope that some of them would. But the other thing is that it seems from the reports that I have seen that the age of the trafficked child is getting younger and younger and younger. Yes, yeah. The, um, the target is around 11 and 12, 11 to 12. And, um, and now they're finding that young children that she was probably trafficking the young children because she got she got more for them than you would for trafficking yourself and so um that was one of her comments that the kids brought in more money uh which is which is just sickening you know that it is sickening Uh, i hope our listeners i hope you understand why we're doing this and why we're talking about this because the more that you the listener can be aware of what's going on you never know what you might see You never know what you might hear. Uh, Many times uh, a child will come to someone they know but are not related to because they feel safer uh, and tell them what's going on. So if you are ever approached by one of these children, immediately, immediately go to the police and report it and and get these people uh, out because, uh, you know, it's just it's just horrible what's happening. And so back to the grooming. So, for example, I, I work on a camp, on a campus, and I had a mom who was actually a, a, a pastor's wife, and she said, "Oh, my daughter met this wonderful guy. He buys her this. He does this. He gets her hair." And, and I thought, "Huh?" And she goes, "And he's on campus every day, meeting her after every class. He walks her to every class." I said, "Is he a student?" And she goes, "No, I don't think so." And number one, I'm like, "Why is he on campus?" And so I just, my red flag went up. I said, you know, it sounds like she's being groomed, to be honest. She thought I was crazy. You're just in that stuff. You, That's all you see, blah, blah, blah. I go, all right. So then she told me that this guy, um, you know, he was having dinner with the family. He was getting really close to the sisters. And then she said that this guy was going to take her to Europe um, to meet his family. Because, you know, and, and so I'm like, don't. She goes, but the funny thing is, is that he couldn't afford a round trip ticket. And I said, if he can afford haircuts, dinner, shoes, purses, he can afford. And she said, well, I don't know. And then um, she'll just come back when she's ready, he said. And so I just said, you know, I got to tell you, do something for me. And so what I told her to do was when they were at dinner, having dinner, to um, to tell the guy, going, you know what? I've always wanted to go to Europe. I'm going to get my ticket at the same time. Tell me when their ticket is. And I'll fly. I'll fly there with her. And I can see Europe. And then I'll pay for her ho- her home ticket. And you know what? That kid never contacted that girl again. Wow. And and so that's the stuff is that this was, you know, uh, she she just said, like, there's no way. And that's what happens, too, is we allow the, sometimes these the, the uh, perpetrators are allowed into the homes because they know them. They, they're neighbors, they, you know, et cetera. So it's 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 pretty nefarious how, how all this works. Wow. So how are you um, educating uh, not only the parents, but teachers and administrators uh, and it's sad that the hotel industry was shut down. I wish you could also educate the B&B uh, <laughs> segment. I mean, there is an industry association. So if you could find a way to address them as well, um, uh, whether they would pay attention or not is something different. But if you could address that, I mean, there is an association that you could go to. So how are you educating the teachers and the administrators and and so forth? Originally, I was doing uh, live webinars, which I haven't done for 
uh, for a while. And so that kind of, um, you know, stopped. But what I did is I created some online courses. So for example, uh, one of the, my online courses is for hospitality uh, employees and the, the fine is big. So for example, if they don't, within six months, if they don't have this training, it's $500. And every time they check, you get a thousand dollar fine. So, I mean, if you had a hundred people and you're getting a thousand dollar fine because they're not trained, that's a hundred thousand dollars for them for just in fines. So I have that, I have it in English and in Spanish, and that follows to the T all the laws for um, for for the the mandates for that, and so now in California they have where uh, that, that with the sex education it has to have a component of trafficking, and so I again made online courses for um, uh, just because people were, can't go out and I um, I do web Zoom webinars and just try to show people like here's some of the signs here's some of the indicators but the biggest thing now is how the grooming starts through the internet that's huge and that's where most of our kids get their first contact is through games and apps like in their own room and that's Does when that having a parent control on that help at all or no well it's funny because some of them are or they're, they're like rated G type games. And so, um, and some of them, you know, I don't know the ins and outs because I don't know the technology that well. But uh, so, but one of the things I use in my class is this, is this uh, pic, this interview, these two parents are so livid. They're, the mom was, you know, just got out of the shower and the little girl had the iPad and she showed her this screen goes what's this mommy and it was a it was a, a, a movie clip and it was um kind of porn and she's seven and she's like oh my gosh oh my gosh so she took the ipad and called her husband and he went on it and all the ads for him were like agriculture and farming because that's what he, he was and so the the wife went on it and it came up with um teachers websites and you know learning things and so they're like this is weird and as they tried and tried and tried it could not get that 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 ad back that they saw and so uh the dad had an idea and he took his phone with the daughter's picture and he put it in front of the camera and so those those things started coming up again ad really in, inappropriate ads um when that picture was up so then they decided to have the daughter open that up for them and immediately that video came back immediately when the daughter's face was part of their face, face recognition. So that's something, you know, that you, um, that you can, you know, you can uh, keep a, a tape so that they're not getting, having people be able to look at them. And so there, there's just a lot of stuff that you can do. And there's a, uh, uh, a place called Bark. And what they do is they help parents uh, track that they'll help they'll track it for you and they'll they'll tell you if there's instances of any grooming or bullying or depression um, and they track that for you and it's b-a-r-k and so what we're trying to do is is not be alarmist but be realist and say this is happening and we we can we can you know we can do something about it well you know so what it, you're doing is so so important dr judy and the other part of it is, um, you know, they have, at least some of the communities have, uh, I guess you'd call them internet police, people who are posing as, um, uh, you know, uh, young girls to be able to trap some of right. these people, which is so important. But I don't think every community is doing that. And that's where there's a, a fall off and a lag. But uh, it, it, you know, with, with the internet comes the good and comes the bad. Exactly. And uh, just like there's false news and there's real news, um, that's good and bad. Exactly. Uh, you know, just like with the social media, there's good and there's bad. Right. So, uh, but it's a constant education process. It's a constant going back and saying, what's happening that's new that we need to be aware of? Right. And, you know, uh, I don't know how you keep up with it all. Well, you know, the, the thing about it, too, is it's hard to keep up with it. It's just because it's really a hard topic. And so I have to take a break sometimes that, where I can't even think about it. And I have to, um, like, there's a lot of books out that sur a lot of survivors wrote their story. I just can't read those sometimes. I mean, I started to, and I thought, oh, 
this is just too much. So when I do my classes and when I talk about this, I always tell people, this is a tough topic. Be aware of how you're doing. Do you need to step out? Do you need to take a breath? Do you need to tune it out and really take care of yourself? Um, because it's just, it's just so huge. It's so big. Well, we only have about five minutes left, uh, Judy. So tell us how people can get in touch with you, uh, how they might take, get some of your products. Uh, what are some of the things that, um, you know, uh, people need to do or, but how can they get a hold of you so that they know what they need to do? Well, my, um, my, I do a Judy at parenting matters, consulting.com. And that's my, that's my coaching website. And, at, at, um, and Judy at parenting matters.com is my email. So the travel, when they want to find more about trafficking, uh, traffickingawareness.org is my page I created with all the information. They can get the classes there. They can find out about the laws. Um, they can find out, uh, you know, what, what's happening, mainly in California, but they can get an idea of what's going on. And those courses for teachers, administrators, uh, hotel are all within that, that traffickingawareness.org site. And so as a parent coach, you know, I, uh, my, my first love in early childhood education, I do coaching, I do group coaching. Right now I'm actually launching a, a, a challenge um, on tantrums, tantrum breakthrough challenge, which I, uh, you know, I help people walk through getting to the other side of tantrums, which, which I did specifically because with this pandemic, that's what I'm hearing about is that, that that parents are at their wits end. And so I'm trying to meet the needs of where our families are right now. There's a lot of, lot of different needs going on with our, with our people. Absolutely, and I just wanna make sure people know how to spell trafficking. So if you wanna to go to her trafficking site, it's www.traffic, T-R-A-F-F-I-C, uh, trafficking, so it's uh, T-R-I-T-R-A, F F I C K I N G trafficking awareness.org. Uh, well, Judy, this has really been something. Uh, I want to um, also encourage people to go to my website, which is spunkyoldbroad.com. Uh, you can get my newsletter there, which I hope that you'll subscribe to. We only send it out once a week on a Monday, but I hope you'll find it interesting. We have our store there where you can buy my coffee cups, my t-shirts, my leggings, and my programs. I have the uh, online university there where you can take my self-study programs uh, at your own pace. We have the virtual SOB club on Facebook, which is free. Uh, we have about 360 members and uh, I'm on there every day posting. So hopefully you'll get to uh, see that. And don't forget that next month, February is spunky old broad month. So uh, we'll have different <laughs> activities all the time. Uh, so hopefully, um, you know, that will be good for you as well. So um, let's see, is there anything left, Dr. Judy, that we have not said that you want people to know? I think, you know, being aware is a first step. You know, we all can't be advocates. We all, and you know what, I'm not, a, I'm not a crusader. I'm just an educator. I'm not going to be, you know, on a stakeout with, you know, Cheetos and what, you know, I'm not, I'm not, that's not my role in this, but my role is to educate. And so just so people listening and hearing this, they most likely will talk to someone else. And that's part of the education process as well. Um, and I am definitely going to go get one of those SOB t-shirts. That's awesome. <laughs> Great. Yeah, you just have to go to the store uh, that's on my page and it will give you all the uh, information you need. And believe it or not, I have guys that want to wear the same thing, believe it or not. But, you know, I wish you only the best, Dr. Judy. I mean, you are doing a most valuable service. You've been through hell and back. You've come out of it. You're an educated woman who thought she didn't do well in school. You have uh, a son who is surviving, who you love very much. You honor the son you, you lost. I mean, we can't ask for more than that. You do uh, everything that you can possibly do. Uh, you've lost siblings, you've lost parents. I mean, this is your time to shine. So I want people to understand that. So my guest has been uh, Dr. Judy Osterhage, and uh, thanks so much for being with us. 
Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you.